Are you looking to rent an apartment in the Netherlands? You have probably just discovered that it's a little bit more difficult than you expected. You're messaging dozens of agencies on Funda and Pararius, but all you get is either the waiting list or no response at all. I'm Anna, I'm an expat entrepreneur living in the Netherlands and I do have some recent experience finding an accommodation here. I'm also a member of several communities where people are looking for accommodation daily. So I have the most recent tips for you in this video. Renting an accommodation in the Netherlands is real, but it ain't easy. All you have to do is a certain sequence of steps, but you have to do it right. And here are the steps. Step 1. Respond to an online listing. Step 2. Get a viewing confirmation. Step 3. View the apartment. Step 4. Send in your documents and confirm your interest. And step 5. Sign a contract. That's it. It looks so easy, right? Yet renting a place might take weeks or even months because on each of the steps you have to figure out what exactly you need to do. Well, not anymore because in this video you will get all the exact steps you need to take with the right templates that increase your chances of being selected for an apartment of your dream. So watch this video until the end. And before we move to step number one, we'll answer the question that a lot of people are asking and probably that you have. How long does it take to find accommodation in the Netherlands? As you might expect, it's really hard to give a ballpark. If you're looking at middle segment, which is from 1000 euro to 1600 euro, and you have some special requirements for your apartment, or you have some aggravating circumstances, which we'll talk about a little bit later, give yourself at least a month and better month and a half. And if you find accommodation in three weeks or so, you are very lucky because I will not sugarcoat it, it's hell, but it's doable. So let's now go through each of the steps, focusing on exactly what you need to do to rent an apartment of your dream. Step one, respond to an online listing. The two websites you'll be using to find accommodation in the Netherlands are Funda and Pararius. And when you first visit those websites, you see dozens, if not hundreds of available apartments that you might rent. So what's the big deal? What a lot of Dutch newcomers do not realize at this point is that if the ad is over one day old, it doesn't make any sense to respond to it because the viewing is full. Unfortunately, it's even worse if you haven't responded to an ad within the first 30 minutes since publication. Don't even bother to do that because this property will like 90% of the time will have all the viewing scheduled and two waiting lists on top of that. Yes, the demand is this crazy. That's why your goal at this stage is to respond to a listing as soon as possible, preferably within 10 or 15 minutes since publication. And one mistake I see a lot of newcomers are making at this stage is that they start to post uh, their own ad um, that they are looking for an apartment to uh, Facebook groups or to Telegram chats. And I have to tell you, in 98% of cases, probably 99% of cases, that is just a waste of time. And probably if you're looking to rent an apartment short term, like for a month without any registration, that might work and that might work very good. But if you're looking to rent something long term, fat chance. Because picture you're a landlord, you can list your apartment on these websites and have a hundred people coming to you, a hundred people that have stable jobs, good income, um, have no animals, no kids, no aggravating circumstances at all. So why would you let your apartment to a random person on social network? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So back to our goals you need to be the first or among the first to respond to the listing. Now, to respond to the listing, you usually need a text. And this text can either double your conversion to viewings or kill any chance that you had. So let's create a perfect text for you right now. When I was looking for my first apartment, I would respond to uh, all these listings with something like that. Hi, I love the apartment and I would love to view it. Is it still available? Thank you. And with this text, I got almost no responses at all. What are the mistakes I made in this text? First of all, I didn't state who I was and who's gonna be the tenant. 
Am I single? Am I a student? Do I have kids? Do I have animals? All of this matters. The second mistake was I did not state my income. And your income is basically the first thing the agency will be checking. For you to be able to rent an apartment in the Netherlands, your gross salary has to be three times the rent. It's a requirement. So if you satisfy this criteria, mention it because it makes you a favorable candidate. Next, my third mistake was that I didn't state for how long I need the apartment. And I know it sounds strange because basically the listing will state for how long you can rent this apartment, but that is the question a realtor will ask you later. So why not answer it straight away? It's nice to be proactive. So I perfected my initial message a little bit and it became this. Hi, we are a couple of 35 and 36 years, no kids, no animals, and we are very interested in renting this apartment long term. We are both employed in IT companies with indefinite contracts and our gross income is six times the rent. Is it still available for viewing? Thank you. You can notice that this message has become very specific and it's good. One more tip. I know that a lot of people would recommend you to call uh, the agency right after you send a response via Funda or Pararius. And I feel like a while ago it was a loophole and those who called were seen as more interested, uh, people who are more interested in renting uh, this specific apartment. But nowadays it seems that real estate agents are more annoyed by that and there are a lot of listings that particularly mention that you should not call and you should only send the request via uh, the website, Funda or Pararius or the agency's website. So it didn't work for me, but if you feel like that's something you need to do, try that. Why not? It might work. To conclude step one, if you respond in such a manner with a, this specific message to uh, three or four listings a day, um, you should be able to get two, three, four viewings a week, like next week. But wait, before viewing the apartment, you have to proceed to step two. And step two is getting a viewing confirmation. Typically, if you manage to respond to the listing within 10 or 15 minutes since publication, you will get a very standard message from the agency. It will contain a few questions and here is a very typical example. At this stage, your goal is to respond to this email as soon as possible. And unless you have an extremely busy schedule, I would not recommend you to be very picky about viewing times. Because sometimes they will ask you, when do you want to see the apartment? And if you respond, oh, I only can do 9 a.m. Tuesday morning next week, that's probably not gonna work. So the more flexible you are, the more viewings you'll be getting. If you were quick, you'll get another email with date and time of the viewing. And if you don't have any aggravating circumstances, this was the most difficult part. So congratulations. And we are moving to step number three, viewing the apartment. The next step is viewing the apartment. And in 90% of the cases, you'll be meeting a realtor, not the owner of the apartment. Um, however, I had like 20 viewings last time I was looking for recommendation and two of them were actually with landlords. Another important thing for you to know is that in the Netherlands, there are two types of viewings. First, you can get a time slot just for yourself. So you come to the apartment and there's no one, just you and the realtor. And you can ask questions. Um, you, can, you might want to make a connection with the realtor, especially if you love the apartment very much. I remember when we found our perfect apartment and we had five minutes with a realtor, uh, we asked all the questions and then just honestly told him that we really, really love this apartment and we might not be the best candidate, but we are certainly the ones who needed the most and who wanted the most. And I just asked him to mention that to the landlord if he had this opportunity. It didn't work out due to another reason, but uh, I got some really good feedback from that realtor on my documents and I was able to improve a lot. Now, the second type of viewing you might get is an open house. An open house is basically when there is a set time slot. It might be a half an hour or an hour and all the candidates, like 30 or 35 families, candidates are invited to come uh, at this specific time. 
So if it's at 9 a.m. and it's one hour, you might come at 9 a.m., at 9.30, at 9.50. So it, it doesn't really matter. You won't have this sense of privacy. There will be a lot of people and you will see all of your competitors and that might scare you off a little bit. But this is a very normal thing for the Netherlands and don't be discouraged by all of that. It might work. So basically there is no connection to, to a human, to the realtor or to the landlord and you have no idea what the deciding factors are. I've had several viewings of this type and I guess the first viewing was the most stressful. Um, we came to the apartment and there were 10 other families, 10 other candidates waiting by the door and it was a little bit terrifying. But eventually the apartment I rented, I rented it through this type of viewing. Although there were less people that time, maybe I was just lucky. So um, just try it out. Don't be discouraged if it's an open house. You have the same chances, basically. Uh, maybe a less privacy, but it also works. And I don't need to tell you that if you have a set time, don't be late for the viewing. Dutch people are very punctual. And we're moving into step four. Just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel, sending in your documents and confirming your interest. But before we proceed to the full list of documents that will help you to get the apartment of your dreams, I wanna cover the most important thing when it comes to your documents and when it comes to renting an apartment. Because there is one key thing when it comes to uh, gathering your documents and renting an apartment. And if you're missing it, you might be missing this key point, which can undermine the whole process. The key thing when it comes to your documents is to convince your landlord that you can and will pay the rent until the end of the contract. I know that might sound pretty obvious, but let me tell you the greatest fear of the landlord in this country. The worst case scenario is that you move in and you stop paying the rent. And as far as I understand, as far as I heard from other realtors, if you move in and stop paying the rent, of course, a landlord might go to court, but uh, this whole process will take them at least five months. It's five months to get you out with no rent at all. Now picture that on top of that, a landlord might have a mortgage, which they still need to pay, so the tip here is gather all the documents you can find to convince your landlord that you can and will pay the rent until the end of the contract. And there is another thing I don't really understand though. When I was desperate to find an apartment and uh, I found an apartment I really loved, I sent a message stating that I'm ready to prepay this apartment for half a year or maybe it was even a year. So I was ready to pay for a year's rent, but uh, I still got absolutely no response. And any time I was offering that option, uh, I did not see any interest from the other party, you know? Most landlords will prefer a bigger deposit. As one realtor said, if you're ready to prepay half a year in advance, um, do you plan to stop paying the rent after that? That sounds a little bit strange to me, but um, hey guys, if you are from the Netherlands, uh, if you have an insight into why is it like this, please uh, leave a comment below. Now there's another question that you might be very interested in answering. What about savings? But then again, there are different scenarios. So let's say you have a hefty sum on your bank account and you want to rent an apartment, but you are not employed. Will you be able to rent something? That really depends. However, I want you to know that um, even a hefty sum on your bank account does not resolve the situation. We asked a few realtors what they think about it and if uh, like a large amount of savings can compensate for, you know, can convince your landlord that you'll be paying the rent. And what they told us was basically, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good factor, it's good if you have savings. However, um, you have 100,000 euros on your account and tomorrow you buy a Ferrari and you don't have that money and you are not able to pay the rent. 
That's the way people see your savings here. So the key thing, your best chance to convince your landlord that you can and will be paying the rent is having this recurring revenue, your salary. It stands above anything else. So without further ado, here is the list of documents that your agency or your landlord will ask you to send in. Copy of your residence permit, copy of your contract, salary slips from the past three months, a statement from your bank account that is a proof that you actually received this salary, your savings account statements, a recommendation letter from previous landlords, a recommendation letter from colleagues or anyone you know in the Netherlands, or if you don't have such people, a recommendation letter from your landlord abroad. It is much better than nothing. A presentation about you. And in a lot of cases, you'll also have to fill in a specific form regarding this specific apartment with all your details. If you're an entrepreneur, here are some other documents they expect from you. A KVK extract, an account statement for the past three years, and I guess any details on your business that you can share. Now, whoever you are, it's highly recommended that you prepare a presentation uh, for your future landlord. Your presentation is probably one of the most important documents you send in because it's your chance to connect with the landlord. Because probably there will be more people with more or less the same salary and the same conditions, but uh, you might want to add some personal touch because in many cases, this is something that gets you an apartment. But what's an ideal presentation? Your presentation should provide a clear understanding of who you are and what you do and why you're looking for an apartment. Overall, it should contain a picture, a brief description of uh, why you loved this specific apartment. Now it's time to not be brief about that. And you can also provide links to your social profile so that your future landlord knows who you are. So if you do all of these things, step five should not be a problem. And on step five, the agency will normally confirm that, yes, we have chosen you. Um, they will send you a draft contract. Um, they will state when um, they can transfer the keys. Um, and probably they will connect you with a previous tenant um, who is living um, just to arrange, you know, the, the moving in and all that stuff. In many cases, you'll have an opportunity to purchase uh, some furniture from the previous tenant, um, a part of the furniture or all the furniture. And again, in most cases, it's not a lot. So um, we were looking at an apartment and the previous tenant was selling all the stuff that was in the apartment for 500 euro. It wasn't very expensive, but uh, you know, it was nice. And I guess that was it. These were the most important things and tips and hacks when it comes to renting a place in the Netherlands in 2023. I really hope that these tips will help you to get an apartment of your dream sooner rather than later. And if you learned something useful in this video, hit like and leave me a comment because it really motivates me to create other videos on this topic. Thank you for watching and if you're interested in life in the Netherlands, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week.